while I walk you through a little bit of DraftKings, the official sports Ooh. betting partner of Major League Baseball, you can bet $5 on any team to win. And even if they don't win or lose, you will get $150 in free bets. That's not too shabby. If you're looking to get in the game, do it with DraftKings. They have their same game parlays. Bobby Gordo's been putting a couple bets out on Friday. Two for three last week. That's not bad. It's not bad. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code JOMBOY. Bet just $5 and get $150 in free bets no matter what happens on the field. Promo code JOMBOY at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. And be trademarks used with permission, Pete. There's something cool going on in Baltimore, which isn't a phrase um, I think has been said on a lot of baseball, <laughs> baseball shows in a while. Uh, uh, they called up Daddy Adley. Uh, Adley Rushman gets the call, the 24-year-old switch hitting super prospect numero uno. Right. Uh, as of the last rankings, um, yep. I know him and Bobby had been flipping a little bit and there's a yeah, Bobby got promoted from no longer being a prospect kicks so. off the list. Yeah. You're out of the league. He's starting to go, Peter. I, I know you keep your eyes on him. He's starting to go nuts, but yeah, Adley gets the call. Um, happy for Orioles fans. I was tough on them earlier this year. I had to like talk myself out of it. I kind of didn't know what I was doing. I, I felt like a weird, I felt like a weird high school offensive lineman that was bullying a kid just because like the other O linemen were doing it. And I was just like, hey, chill out, Jake. Like the Orioles have their own problems. Let them be. I'm happy Adley is up. It feels like he should have been up a little while ago. He did, he hurt his triceps. That's why he wasn't there to start this season. Um, and Peter, you know, not to brag too much, um, that now famous clip of me front row at the Yankees game, uh, they were playing the Orioles and I got to see Adley and he was, uh, I was up the first baseline. So he was, you know, every throw to first base, he was running down the line. He is a big boy. Um, he, he is a tanker truck. Um, and man, I'm, I'm just happy he's in the show and it looks like he's seeing pitches and um, I don't know what the final pro a rookie year in baseball is a rookie year in baseball, but man, uh, this guy should be the one of the futures of the sport for a while. Yeah. I, I, the most impressive part for me, and I said this with Rosie, I said he, the fact that he was able to be in the moment enough to take it all in and have a look. Whereas stark contrast to my first game where I was absolutely shit scared to even look above the brim of my cap to see that there was a second deck. So uh, it was like, <laughs> he's the kid that knows he's going to be here for a while. And, and I was a guy that didn't know how long this was going to last. So, you know, contrasting, contrasting starts to their career. <laughs> Similar. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever been to Corvallis where Oregon state is? I've not. I've never been on. I've, I've never been to that part of the country. I think. I think we need to get up there. We need an All Star game in Seattle. That's what we need. Sold. Let's do it. Um, he's off to uh, not a gangbuster start. He's got five hits. His first hit was the triple, which that's really cool stuff in Oriole Land. I think him, Machado, and Ripken. Matt. All. And Matt Weeders and we, Weeders. Maybe, maybe it wasn't Ripken. Maybe it was Weeders, Machado, and Rushman. But they all their first hit was a triple. Weeders, like I mean, I get it. Two catches, and they both the first hits are triples. And Weeders, I, I don't think he would mind me saying this, but he's not the most fleet of foot I've ever seen. Come on, even as a rookie, like it wasn't like he was picking them up and putting them down. So two triples from two catches. Matt Weeders, man, he was talk about another super prospect on his way up. Do you ever you ever cross paths with him? I played golf with him uh, a couple of years ago. Great guy, um, and I think it's kind of underrated. Like he, he uh, did he deal with a bunch of injuries? Georgia Tech product, right? Georgia Tech guy, and 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think for him, at least early on, he was playing and he was, again, good for a catcher. I, I think the expectations, sometimes we see number one prospect, Bobby Witt Jr., we see number one prospect, um, Adley Rushman, and you're like, okay, so each of these guys are going to have a 950 OPS, and it's like, well, catchers don't really do that, man. Who has there been? I mean, J JT Real Muto did it for a couple of years, but he's scuffling this year. It's a Pudge, short, did it's Pudge a, do that? Pudge would have done that, right? It's a short life, Sam, man. I think Pudge has a couple Texas years that I think there was a lot of stuff going around on baseball, but I think he was he was nasty. And it's, you know, it it just re-highlights like a Buster Posey who Buster Posey did it last year. And then he dipped because he's like, I've I've probably got yeah. close to five hundred million in my bank account. Okay, so does he, based on what he did, go to the Hall of Fame? I get in a tight spot on this because I grew up with a guy named Jorge Posada, who a lot of his stats tell me he's a Hall of Fame catcher. Um, I do think Buster Posey, the feel is is a little different and an MVP in the bag always makes me, I mean, I, I'm not a small hall guy. So I'd say yes, Buster Posey should be in the hall of fame, but there are a lot of our arguments with a lot of really good baseball players that could also say he shouldn't. So that's where I'm at. This is a whole discussion for another day, but now we get into the, well, if he doesn't go in, then what is it going to take to get in? after right. that because there's not going to be many guys that are going to play a longer career than Buster Posey from this point on looking at the way the game's going Peter you're talking to the right guy it's, it's just I think we need to start doing some revisionist history with the hall and do like guys we've missed along the way um Fred McGriff Dale Murphy like, I, don't get me wrong. I know there's, there's tears to everything, right? Um, and, you know, Fred McGriff is not Albert Pujols. You got me uh, cornered. But Fred McGriff was an awesome baseball player. Mm -hmm. Thurman Munson, man, that's the one Yankee fans po point mm -hmm. to with Posey. I, I got two catchers in Yankees land that I could give you a pretty good, I think that guy should be a Hall of Famer argument. So it, it just depends where you want yeah. to draw your line. But if I told you Thurman Munson has an MVP, seven-time All-Star, three-time Gold Glove, if I told you Buster Posey has an MVP, seven-time All-Star, one-time Gold Glove, like, I don't know. I, I don't know why either of those guys isn't in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Man, we could get into that, but let's so, let's not. Let's get into something else. Okay? Oh yeah, that'll well, that'll be a couple years down the road for Adley Rushman. But um, <laughs> <laughs> if you're a uh, ooh nickname Clutchman on Baseball Reference, are we in on that? Oof, I don't know. I love Jared Salter Lamakia. I really do. I play. I I grew. I played with him. We were to sort of came up together ish. Like I was a bit older, but he has limited addition on the back of his triceps and i i think that's probably the the, the that's 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 up there yeah <laughs> if it's a self if it's a self-imposed nickname and you call yourself clutchman or limited edition i don't know if someone else calls you that and you're like yeah i like that i'll just get it tattooed on me then i'm cool with that too but yeah there's guy guy i went to school with on the basketball team god's gift tied tattooed on his triceps um <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 next level yeah. holy shit. yeah uh the uh, only difference would be if he had a tattoo just in his lower stomach that would be better <laughs> with the arrow um <laughs> what's what's the uh peter what what should be honest expectations for adley rushman because man this this is where i end up talking in circles because dude look at jared kelnick gets gets sent down uh, this year. And that, again, we're not talking yeah. about the catching position that should be treated differently. These guys are asked to do so much more on any given day that what's real. Like yeah. uh, if, if you're an Orioles fan, do you just want to see him I, survives? Not the right word, but survive or be average. Even? Not, yeah. 
so the, they're in a different situation that he can fail and it's not going to be an issue. They're not looking to replace him this year. And you look at, like, you go back a few years when people were able to fail at the big league level. And if you recovered, then great. You, you've learned valuable lessons throughout that year. The problem now is that teams put such an emphasis on winning right, right away. And they think that these young guys should come up and make an impact and, and they don't allow them to ease into their careers. The only one I can really look at was Brian McCann. When Brian McCann came up, he was, he was an impact bat straight away. And it was John Smoltz that was that threw to him once and said, hey, that's the guy that I want to throw to. So, you know, there's not that veteran guy in Baltimore. Is there, is there anyone there that's, that's sort of an older, an older guy in the starting rotation that, that not really. Uh, they signed Jordan Lyles this year, um, but that's that's it. Okay. Well, I, I honestly just think that he he can learn the game, learn, I guess, each of their pitches, even though they're probably not going to be there when it's time for them to actually try and win. I mean, he can just get used to this game at this level. But again, it's going to speed up as well as 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 the team gets better and maybe as they grow together, you know, maybe there'll be a few other prospects that come up that can that can flank him and and make this a a, a decent run. But they they're, they're playing good baseball right now. It's, they're playing decent baseball. They're not they're not a laughing stock, which is which is good for me and it's good for him that he's not just going to get punched down every time he goes out there too. Yeah, and I I guess something that's going to be interesting to watch to see how he develops and what he turns into. Um, they have they've DH'd him three games and he's caught five, um, and they have Robinson Chirino, so he's you know a veteran catcher that's that's been around and done it a little bit. So m- maybe that's even maybe that's part of the answer I was looking for. Maybe they're telling him like, hey, because like you're saying, a, a lot of their rotation, I I don't think Baltimore currently has penciled in for the the 2025 Orioles. So if if you're them, maybe they're saying like, hey, come up, adjust to the pitching, feel things out. Um, easier said than done, I'm sure. But um, let's get him a home run soon. We're on game eight, and you just don't want that to become a thing. Yeah. Well, it, and is that a th- – that's another subject, man. Like, home runs aren't a thing right now. There's a lot of pool home runs going on. Oppo home runs are tough to come by these days. Like, it, have you talked about the balls much? We've done a little ball talk. Um, you know, I, I think they're definitely not juiced. I, I think the question, if, if there was, let's see, what's, what's the Jake way to phrase this? If the juice ball years were a 10 out of 10, um, like the, the ball just being as, as juiced as I've seen a baseball, like 2019, 2017. Uh, it feels like right now the ball is a five. Um, and I think if I got a final vote in the court of the law, I'd like a, like a six and a half. Um, it, it feels like there have been a couple balls, and I don't know if it has to do with weather. I know we always talk about that, and I – think there's no data that supports it which is hilarious um and then i we were comparing numbers to last year and i i I don't think the numbers were too far off i think hitting was down a little bit this year compared to last year but last year we literally had a mandate go out that pitchers were using too much sticky stuff and they had to stop so that was a little bit of the cause and effect there so I think the balls could use a just a little bit more queso in there, and I I know that probably hurts you a little bit as a pitcher, but just a little bit. I just think there's so much inconsistency now with even from a like a game to game batter to batter. That's the that's the thing that I just get confused at is that I I know that they're sending baseballs all over the place, and it's hard to keep them uniform with every stadium and every clubhouse guy and every but, you know, there's just – the stories that I'm hearing is it's just the inconsistencies with the baseballs is the issue. I think you're right, and I, I think that's ridiculous because um, I, I know who owns the baseballs. Um, that should be an easy solution. Hey, give everyone the same baseball. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, 2022, you know? What an idea. <laughs>